Following on from part one, we're going to finish off with a few more bullet tips and then we're going to apply open VDB to it and hopefully come up with a few concepty type landscape things. The setup is exactly the same as part one. I have a force field that references that trigger null. I have a ground object which I've just tilted slightly and this time I have a stack of boxes. The only thing I've changed if we come over to the world tab here is I've added a little bit of gravity and that's basically to override the linear speed threshold here and the deactivation time. As before, if it hadn't moved after a second, it would freeze. This is what we have, it's pretty straightforward. The first thing I want to look at is this is very uniform. So let's randomize some of this up. I'm gonna select the force field and quick copy that. So I've got a duplicate of that. Option N, let's rename this to vortex. I've given away the surprise, okay to that. So under type, change force field to uh, vortex. So that's with the vortex. Now it's still referencing that trigger null because we duplicated the force field, but it's a little bit on the strong side. So I'm gonna change that from minus 10. Actually, let's go in the other direction. Let's just put two in, see what happens. That's nice with a little bit of additional randomness there, but I want more. Select our object. Here we go. Now this is just, as I mentioned earlier, a stack of boxes. I could easily go back into Modeler and jitter this up a little bit, but as we all know, Modeler is a very destructive process. So what I'm gonna just do is use displacements instead. Before we do that though, let's disable bullet. So we don't get any funny interference there. I'm gonna close that down and we'll press P on the keyboard for properties. You will notice that bullet is applied in the modifier stack which means if we add a nodal displacement in front of it, we can displace before bullet is applied. So let's do that. Let's keep this super simple. I'm gonna use the native displacements from I think 2019 plus. And because of that, the first thing I'm gonna do is double click and change the mode to set. And then under displacements, I'm going to look for the transform node. And we're gonna do everything through this node here. So let's plug the deform into the input and everything jumps around. But don't panic, it's a simple fix. I'm simply gonna take the current position and point that to the point position. That will bring everything down into the correct position. What I'm actually gonna do while I'm thinking about it, let's go to the bullet and turn off, where is it, draw bodies, let's select none. Okay, so we're just left with the geometry, that's good. Dealing with scale first, I want each of these boxes to scale from its center point. So let's get a mesh part. I'm gonna take the part center and plug that into the effect center. And I'm gonna get a random node. I'm gonna take the scalar flavor of that. So they're all being scaled by the same number on each axis. So I'm gonna take the part index into the seed and then the out into the stretch. There we go. So let's play around with that. Perhaps a little bit larger, perhaps not. Let's just leave it like that. Okay, good. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the position, but I'm gonna take a random vector, take the seed, and then I'm gonna move that to the translation. Okay, so that's good. And I'm gonna get another random scalar and I'm gonna rotate them. So pretty much the same setup and then out into rotation. Now we have to bear in mind that this is, I think, in radians, so perhaps a minus three to three. We're gonna open VDB these in a bit, and I think these little ones might be a little bit on the small side, so I'm gonna make those a bit larger. Okay, so that's randomized quite nicely. Let's close this down. Let's go over to the bullet and open up the properties. Enable dynamics. I may have to hit the reset button. Let's do it anyway. So the first problem we have is it totally ignores our displacement. And that is because we're as a part type. So it overrides totally that thing that's in front of it. But if we change the part to deforming, We'll turn on the draw bodies and then we can see we have a nice functioning displacement but this time as a deformed object rather than a parts body okay that's good
And there's no reason why we can't keep this live. So we can go back at any point and change the settings. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna bake out this object just to free up a little bit of processing time. So this is really easy to do. I'm just gonna make sure this object is selected. Go into the In Out tab and export a multi-baker. So I'm gonna save it to this vert cache folder and I'm just gonna hit OK. That's pretty easy. Let's go over to the dynamics and turn them off because I don't need those anymore. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the nodal displacement as well. Now I could go to the MDD thing here, but I'm gonna try this one. I don't know why I find it quite fiddly sometimes. So there's my baked MDD in the vert cache folder. Open that, now I think I have to click on that and then I have to click on that and then I have to click on that again, something like that. Anyway, okay to that. And there's the MDD reader. And then I can play that through and that's all nicely baked. It's also worth mentioning that I could use nodal displacement after this MDD. So if I wanted further displacement, which could come in handy a little bit later for open VDB, I can always do that. So I'm going to turn it off for now and I'm going to move on to open VDB. It's time to open VDB this up. This doesn't need to be this bullet object. If you have an object already you want to use or you want to use particles, then go for it. But I'm using this stack of boxes and bullets just to get something that I wouldn't necessarily have thought about. Anyway, the first thing we need is a null and we're going to call that VDB. Press P for properties and under object replacement, here it is, open VDB evaluator. Press this little P button to open it up. There's a couple of techniques I want to show you, but let's start with the one that you're probably the most familiar with. Everything we'll need will be under this open VDB option here. I'm going to go for a mesh to a volume. There it is. And quite simply, point that mesh to the boxes, which is here. Turn to a level set in world coordinates. And I'm going to take the grid into the grid. Now for this demo, I'm going to make things a bit easier on the CPU and I'm just going to make those voxels much larger. This value will change depending on the scale of your object. So if I want to fatten these up a little bit, let's go for a filter. Grid into the grid, there we go. And then for filter type, I want to dilate. Let's take that up a couple. So we have big chunky marshmallows there. <laughs> And perhaps after this we want to smooth that out so we'll add another filter and we'll pick Gaussian. Perhaps get away with slightly larger voxels. So now if we play through our timeline we've got a VDB object following our geometry. So that's the first technique but I want to show you another which may give you slightly different results. Let's again start fresh and we're going to go for a mesh to volume. We're going to point it at our boxes as a level set and again in world coordinates. But we're not going to use the grid here. We're going to use a from particles node this time. I'm going to take the particle system into the particles and then the grid into the grid. And what you see is this is putting particles on each vert of our geometry. So if you move through the timeline, that should stick to each of those points. So the first thing I can do is control the size of those particles in this mesh to volume. The particle radius, we can make that as large as we want. So we can make it quite big here. And we control the voxel size in this node here, the from particles. So let's again make those quite large. Now the added bonus of this node is that we've got a morphology tab here. And we have all those options that we use with two filter nodes built into this. So if we want to dilate a little bit, and smooth, we can play around with that. And again, play timeline and it should stick to our geometry. It's almost like a poor man's water sim, but uh, not quite. Anyway, next step. So this should be where the fun begins proper, albeit tempered by a little bit of patience. <laughs> Let's add a noise. And also I'm gonna take a procedural texture. I'm going to take the value into the noise and then I'm going to intercept that grid up there and plonk it up. Ah! 
Save your work. Now is as good a point as any to mention that Lightwave was killed mid-development, <laughs> so there will be bugs. Uh, so save often. Anyway, I've recreated the scene pretty easily, and I've managed to plug in the procedural node without a crash. And now it's just a case of selecting a procedural texture that you're happy with. The nice thing about Lightwave is that there's a lot of textures so there's a lot of experimentation as a result. Some textures will work better than others. It's just a case of playing until you find that landscape that you're happy with. If you want a layered look, I found that the marble texture works really nicely. The look will also depend on the resolution of your voxels and the scale. So you'll definitely need to play with those. Okay, so I'm playing around with this. Now I quite fancy a hole through the middle of this. So I'm gonna take these two and copy and paste. I'm gonna remove the morphology. Interestingly, when you copy and paste it, it removes it for me. Another little bug. Then I'm gonna get this CSG. That's what our outer one looks like, and our inner one looks like that. It should be the same, but slightly thinner. And then I'm gonna subtract one from the other. So subtract, yeah, you can't see anything, so it's probably happening in the middle. So if I now plug in my noise into grid one. There we go, I've got a nice hole through the center of that. That's quite an interesting structure. All these nice little pieces. Let's hide our boxes because we don't actually need to see those. We could add even more noise to this. So let's take these two, copy and paste, save, and then we'll take that grid into this noise and then back into here. And we'll pick another texture I found this Hetero Terrain one makes nice little pieces, given the right scale. Also, as I pointed out earlier, let's go back to our boxes. Perhaps we want them stretched out a little bit. I can take that nodal displacement and add it after the MD reader. And that could give us a whole new range of options. Just out of interest, I slowed the MDD file down by 60% and this is what the preview looks like. Let's talk about texturing briefly. Basically do what you want because we're just dealing with bog standard geometry really. Let's turn to VPR. Let's go to the camera properties and turn off adaptive sampling. So one sample should speed things up a little bit. I'm also going to make sure global illumination is off. And finally, under the environment light, let's turn off visible to camera so we can't see that. In my example, I wanted these rows to be like little lights within the actual layers. So I tried edges. Using other edges here gives us a nice graphical outline, which is another look and feel you could explore. If we give this a negative number and make it quite large, we can just see them poking through here. Let's change the color so we can see what's going on. I'll show you how to surface this in a minute. It's a little bit uniform, so let's break that up. And I'm gonna do that with the nodes, so edit nodes. Let's just go for a turbulence. To see what we're doing, I'm gonna plug the color into the other edge color, because that's what's turned on. 
that gives us this, which is a little bit too small. Let's make it larger. A bit more contrast. And let's make it black and white. So I've got that as my reference, but I'm going to use that in the tapered edge. And that's quite interesting because we're seeing the polygons mixed with the edges. But that's going full black there. Now because I'm using black, it's going all the way to zero. So if I take this just below 100%, Something like that. Perhaps we need to make these a little bit larger. Let's go 0.3 and make this smaller. There we go. So I'm getting some sort of windowy effect here, which is good. But obviously, I don't want it this color. I want it to react with the light. So let's do some of that. Let's turn on surface shade. They do possibly look a little bit on the puffy side, but let's uh, continue anyway. Shift click will bring up the surface editor. VDB volume mesh is what we need. We have two things going on here. We have the edges and we have the faces or the polygons. We need to access each of those individually. If we go to material tools, you will see a mesh element switch. So we're using the polygon and the other edge or edge other as it's labeled here. So let's take the material into there. Let's take the material and we'll plug that into the edge other. So my little windows are actually polygons and I want to make those luminous. So I'm going to get an emission material I'm just going to keep that white plug that into the polygon now that should give us our little windows fully luminous so that leaves us with the edge other I wanted to do like a floating island thing because uh, nobody's nobody's ever done that before basically I've got a gradient and set it to slope and basically that was all there was to it other than refining and tweaking and we haven't even taken it into model yet for additional tweaks now this is all live remember i'm going to go through the timeline and look for a couple of layouts that i quite like and i'm going to save them as a transformed object before i start looking for layouts i'm going to save actually i'm not going to keep it in vpr i'm going to keep it in wireframe frame 181 i'm going to go to save save transformed object and then I'm going to go to another frame, select that, and let's do another one, save transform. Okay, so I've saved a couple of frames there, so I'm going to turn the VPR off. I'm going to load those two. So there's the two objects, just move them about and place them however we feel. The one thing to remember here is that we're using edges, and edges is saved with the scene and not the object. So we need to go to the VDB object and we'll need to press, that's a weird one, what's that? Never seen that one before. Well, ignoring that, let's select the, we'll take the open VDB object, click this little icon, copy nodes button, we'll select the other two and we will paste. Now that's done the nodes, that's no problem, but it hasn't actually done this area. So we'll go back to VDB, minus 0 0.4. Okay, so select these two. We want this one and this one minus. Now that should give us our object back. Cool, so it's now entirely up to you how you want to style that. I found cranking up the distant light gave quite an interesting result. And also if we go over to the processing tab, and we'll add tone map type. We'll go for aces, which is the automatically make things look good button. <laughs> we have our environment light in there, remember, so we could play funky colors with this. So despite my explanation, this is actually probably a quick process <laughs> and there's a lot of powerful stuff going on in the background there I reckon. Uh, I hope you found it of use.